quick here on the Articles of Confederation. Um, in chapters four and five, if you've started working on your study guide, you're going to notice that there's several questions about the Articles of Confederation, its structure, um, importance, etc. And it's something that we got to talk a little bit about so that we can uh, just have a better understanding of it. So what the Article, Articles of Confederation was, it was the original governing document of the United States. So it was actually adopted by the Second Continental Congress in 1781, uh, right before the end of the American Revolutionary War. And again, it's our original governing document. Oftentimes we will confuse the Declaration of Independence and Articles of Confederation and Constitution kind of together. But again, remember, the Declaration of Independence does not create any formal structure of government in the United States. That's going to be done by the Articles of Confederation that were ratified by the the states, the colonies, you know, again, before the end of the of the Revolutionary War, uh, adopted by the Second, Second Continental Congress before the end of the American Revolutionary War. And this was our original governing document in the United States. It's going to be in existence for about five years before we are going to realize that we need a change. So as far as structure of the Articles of Confederation, um, again, a lot of it had to do with... Um, state powers and the writers of the articles of confederation were very concerned about a strong national government so what you see happen is in the articles of confederation is that the states are going to have most of the power um one of the big powers that the national government is going to lack is the power to tax so we'll talk about this so the articles of confederation were eventually viewed as being very weak maybe not by everybody you guys are going to read a an account from thomas jefferson today that maybe says, well, maybe they weren't so weak. But the Articles of Confederation, nonetheless, had a very unique system of governing that gave the states more power. And this led to some weaknesses and issues that are going to lead to the Articles being changed. So, um, again, you know, going back to the American Revolution, one of the big things that, uh, one of the big reasons that the colonists rebelled against Britain was the idea of taxation without representation. So, under the Articles of Confederation, the federal government, the national government in the United States could not tax the states. Okay. Again, what do we use taxes for? Well, tax dollars get used to pay for things like, say, an army, um, infrastructure, roads, and such. And so under the Articles of Confederation, the national government lacked the power to tax. That was intentionally written that way because the colonists hated paying taxes to Britain. Okay. Um, the colonists also hated the idea of any strong central government, you know, like the monarchy that Britain had. So because of that, the states did not have to follow federal laws or uh, treaties created by the United States. They could kind of act on their own, if you will. All right. Um, also, you know, the other thing that, that we look at here is, you know, the colonists hated at one point following British laws, following British legislation. So um, what happens is each state came up with a very unique set of laws. Each state had its own constitution, similar to like how states have it today. And, and state laws, even today in 2020, are from one place to the other, are, are somewhat unique. You know, we talk about like speed limits in North Dakota versus Minnesota versus South Dakota, for example. But under the Articles of Confederation, the laws from state to state were significantly different. And really, each state kind of acted as its own independent country. And that led to trade rivalries between the states. You know, there was almost wars fought between the states over like water routes and such. Um, so very interesting. Uh, again, kind of going back to the idea of a strong national government, something the colonists really didn't like, is they didn't like how the king in Britain, King George III, uh, during the revolutionary years, how he didn't have a lot of power. So under the Articles of Confederation, we didn't have an executive branch, meaning we didn't have like a, a president, okay, or the offices that surround the president. Again, the job of the executive branch is to enforce laws. Okay, that's what the executive branch does. They enforce laws. Um, we also did not have a national court system. A lot of that had to do with the fact that some of the court proceedings and such held during the revolutionary years um, weren't fair to the colonists. So they intentionally leave that out. All right. And then again, the last thing here that we can talk about as far as a weakness, the colonists, the Articles of Confederation, the authors hated the fact that King George III just kind of changed the laws as he wanted. So what happened was the under the Articles of Confederation, it was said that if they want to change anything, if the states wish to amend the Articles of Confederation or change anything within that document, and again, like our Constitution, we can change our Constitution. We can have amendments, right? 
process is a little different. We'll talk about that next year, more so when you guys are seniors. But under the Articles of Confederation, all 13 states had to agree to a change in the articles. Now, again, we already established that these states um, operate like independent countries. Do you think it's going to be really easy to get 13 states to agree on anything? Not so much. So it made it it made changing the articles very difficult. And so these things are viewed as inefficient weaknesses by most. Like history books will regard the Articles of Confederation as a very weak structure of governing. However, there will be those that argued it was actually, you know, the idea was fine. You know, maybe some things needed to be tweaked. But um, the idea of not having a strong central government like we do under the Constitution, some would argue, was a great thing. We'll talk more about that. And so the one big thing that we hit on here was taxes. And again, this is all kind of leading into Shays' Rebellion because Shays' Rebellion is viewed as being um, an effect of the the weak the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. So again, because taxing wasn't a thing, the national government could not charge taxes to the states. Um, it caused some financial issues, and those financial issues, coupled with the fact that states didn't have to follow federal law. Um, made things really interesting. Okay, so just kind of looking at some of the problems here, and again, things that we've already touched on here, but a combination of all these things and getting into 1786, when we're going to look at the start of Shays' Rebellion and Daniel Shays and how the farmers are going to take up arms against the the Massachusetts government because Massachusetts, right, following the Revolutionary War, they didn't have any money, right? They couldn't even pay the soldiers who fought in the war, i.e. Daniel Shays, who's a farmer. And so Daniel Shays never gets paid, doesn't get paid for his effort or his services during the Revolutionary War. You start seeing foreclosures on farmland. The farmers kind of rally together. They're going to try to seize an arsenal. And then it's interesting, as the rebellion grows, the states are going to ask for federal help. And it's like, well, you know, what are we supposed to do for you? So again, that structure of the articles in combination with Shays' Rebellion, those things are viewed as oftentimes as what... Um, what leads America to write the Constitution and, and switch to a stronger national government. And again, and that's something that, you know, history books are so guilty of saying, like, this is something that everybody wanted. But, you know, again, alternative perspective is it's maybe some, something that only some people want, like the, the rich, the wealthy, etc. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to read a little about Shays' Rebellion. You're going to see a textbook um, excerpt about it. And then you're going to read kind of an opinion of a Thomas Jefferson who maybe had a different view on the Articles of Confederation. As always, if you have questions, please let me know. Send me an email. Um, you guys have a nice day.